Hello, this is Roland. Today I want to make a short video about prayer, how to pray. This is actually my second video. I made some before, but I'm making them again. Prayer is actually very simple. So I want to give you a clue as to where you're going, where you want to go. Let me read something to you from A Guide to True Peace. It's a very beautiful book that was written over 100 years ago. It's a compendium of, of uh, writings of Madame Jeanne Guillon, François Penelon, and Miguel de Molinos, three Christian mystics, Christian writers, who lived in the 1700s, late 1600s, early 1700s. Amazingly, they were all living around the same time. And they get it. Okay? So, let me begin reading here. This is chapter 5. Method of Attaining True Prayer. So, anybody who's interested in praying, this chapter title ought to catch your attention. The Method of Attaining True Prayer. The sort of prayer to which we have alluded is inward silence. Here the soul disengaged from all outward things in holy stillness, humble reverence, and lively faith, waits patiently to feel the divine presence and to receive the precious influences of the Holy Spirit. When you retire for this purpose, which should be your frequent practice. You should consider yourself as being placed in the presence of God, looking with a single eye to Him, resigning yourself entirely into His hands to receive from Him whatsoever He may be pleased to give you. At the same time, you calmly endeavor to fix your mind in peace and silence, quieting all your own reasonings and not willingly thinking on anything no matter how good or how profitable it may appear to be. Should any vain imaginings present themselves, you should gently turn from them. Thus faithfully and patiently you wait to feel the divine presence. And if while you are thus engaged, something of inward, still, something of inward stillness or a degree of the softening influence of the divine spirit is mercifully granted you, you should prize these manifestations of the presence of God in your soul and be carefully and reverentially attentive to them. Now, this is very profound. It's profound but simple. It's divine simplicity. Okay? It's divine simplicity. But place yourself in the presence of God. Now, in my writings, in my lectures, my articles, my books, my radio program, I talk about a, a finding a, st a stance for your soul, a meditative stance, a state of mind, a state of being, where you're a little bit detached, okay, where you're not so close. So, for example, now as I'm sitting here, I become aware of my hands. And when I'm aware of my hands, they tingle a little bit. Okay? So I'm aware of my hands. And I'm a bit detached to the happenings around me. I still hear the noise of the traffic or a bird singing or some little sound. But it's like it's distant. It's not so close. It's like, you know, have you ever been sitting in a hotel lobby and there's a TV across the, the lobby and it's on and you're not watching it? And there's something on, but it's not interesting to you. And so there it is. It's blaring away, but it's it doesn't affect you in any way. It's like it's a little bit distant. Well, that's the the meditative stance, your soul is a little bit withdrawn, a little bit recollected. 
many of us have had this feeling of being a little bit withdrawn, okay? a little bit um, abstracted. Well, you may have misinterpreted, you may have misinterpreted, you thought you were spaced out or something, which you may have been. See, there's two ways of, be, of this. There's the right way and the wrong way. Maybe this is, maybe this is what I need to say now. I would like to put the, the beautiful, beautiful spiritual writings that, that we just read in terms that you can understand. Now, I said there's two ways of being thus, of being abstracted or withdrawn a little bit. A good way and a bad way. The good way is what I was just talking about, where you're sitting quietly in the present and you're aware in the present. Like now, I'm aware of my hands. That's a very good way for me to, to, re, to refine this presence of mind, where I'm in the present, where I'm not lost in thinking and daydreams and fantasy and worrying about the future or lost in memories of the past. I'm just sitting in the present. And the room, I'm very aware of the room and of the sounds, but they're a little bit distant. So it's kind of a peaceful feeling. You may have had this feeling when you were a little child, when you were a little child, but then you lost it when you became upset and emotionalized and and um, so on. But now that's good. So that is what I am now. Now understand this: when you are in the present. You're not lost in thinking. You're in the present. You are actually closer to God. And if your soul has the, if your soul yearns for what is good, and yearns for what is true, okay. Then, that yearning, okay, that longing, is answered by God. In the present. And. He would draw near to you, and you will sense a little bit, a little something of his presence. It's like a, a peace, a calm. Um, but now let's talk about the wrong way. This is the way most people are withdrawn. You know how that is? Of course you do. They're lost in thinking. Most people are lost between their two ears. When you see them sitting there spaced out, they are spaced out. What are they doing? They're daydreaming about something. Daydreaming about who knows what. And then you tap on their shoulder and then you say, what were you just thinking of? Or what were you just thinking about? And then they go, I don't know. Okay. Think about what happened at the office. What somebody said. What happened in their golf game. What they saw at the store. What their friends said. Or they're thinking about where they're going to go. What they're going to eat. What they're going to do. See, they're fantasizing about something or other. That's where most people are. And those thoughts, see, they're a replacement for God. Those thoughts become your God. They lord it over you. When you and then when you're worried, because you're faithless, that's why you worry, because you're faithless. So in your faithless state, then you worry. You look to thinking for answers. And then your thinking dominates you. See, and the thoughts start... Like a, squirrel ca like a squirrel cage, they start going round and round and round, and you can't stop them. So you're not in control of your own thoughts. Those thoughts, wherever they come from, see, they, they, um, they seduce you away from the present. They seduce you away. So, what you need to do is to, so what you want to do then is to is to practice what the, the spiritual writing that I just read to you said. And the best way that I know to how to, do, to get started doing it is with my little meditation, which helps, you, which helps you to do that. Now, you have to understand that you are used to falling into thought and escaping into thought. See, the... the the thing is that when you're in the present, in the presence, in the present, then you are aware. And then you will you also become aware of your own of your own wrong. 
okay? If you're resentful, you're angry at your mom, you were impatient with your kids, you're selfish, you've been a little phony with people, you start to become aware of that sort of thing. And if you're unwilling to be aware of it, if you don't want to see your own wrong, then you want to deny the truth. And that attitude of wanting to deny the truth and make excuses and just rationale and cover it all up and try to see yourself as a wonderful person, that attitude precludes your finding the presence. Because, because your soul is oriented 180 degrees away from it, you see. But when you desire, your soul really and truly wants to know the truth. Not so you can feel better, not to make yourself good or look good, but simply because you, you, you want to be, a, you, you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. You're sick and tired of resenting and hating and being angry, okay? And you want to be a good parent for your child and a good partner. You don't want to be resentful and judgmental anymore. You don't want to be impatient with your kids. You really and truly don't want to be. And you realize that you, all your efforts to make yourself good haven't worked. And so now you sit there helpless, um, not knowing what to do, but wanting to do the right thing. See, so you have a true need. You don't know what, to, what is right, but you want to do right. And you haven't been able to do right, and you see that you can't make yourself right. Well, that's the ad kind of attitude that will draw the help from, from God, you see. So meditation helps you to be in the present and shows you with the... See, I don't have to close my eyes to be in the present. When I meditate, I can sit here in the presence. And in this present, that's enough. See, where do my thought, where, where, where do my words come from now? I'm sitting here, my mouth is moving. Okay, I'm saying things. Well, where does it come from? I'm not thinking of it ahead of time. I didn't pre-plan it. See, it just, there it is. And it's good stuff. So it's good, coming from the pre present, it's present, it's, it's coming forth, and it's good, okay? And so I'm in this, you could call it a meditative state now, if you want to call it that, this abstracted state, this little bit withdrawn state. So I'm perfectly there. In fact, I'm more there. See, when your soul is not lost in images and lost in sensations and lost in worry, See, then you're more there. See, can you see that? So if my child were to come up right now and say, Dad, then I would say, yes. And I would entertain their, their question. And I would be there to answer from the presence, from the present, with something real, oh, something with love in it, something with patience, something with a little bit of wisdom in it. Instead of the usual thing people do, which is to become angry or impatient and to dredge something up that they heard somebody say or that they read and it's, it's the timing is wrong and everything, the energy is wrong and it's all wrong, see? So can you see how you're actually more there when you're not lost in thoughts? Okay. So the, the little meditation exercise does show you, I do show you, and you can learn it in, in a minute. <laughs> Okay, and it's free. It does show you how to close your eyes and and um, and look at the inside of your eye and see the little particle, little sparkles of light, or little particles of light, the little warm glow of light on the inside of your eyelids. And then when thoughts come along, what you did, what you said, what she said, what you want to do, sure, sure they'll come. Those thoughts will come. But when they do, you notice them instead of escaping into them instead of falling into them, instead of floating away with them. See how simple that is? But what I was going to say is that, is that all your life you've been an escape artist, escaping in the thoughts or sensations or reaching for the iPhone or reaching for, the, for um, music or something to read or something to eat, or reaching for something, reaching into your imagination, a video game, so anything to escape from the presence, okay? Because you were insincere. You didn't want to admit you were wrong. You didn't really want to know the truth, okay? But now, maybe you're ready. 
then you'll be able to be in the present instead of escaping. But your whole lower self, your mind, after years and years of escaping, your body, after years and years of being trained to be nervous and tense and anxious and reaching and struggling and striving and stressed out, see, that's what you've made of yourself. And it will still want to be the same old way, even though it's not good for it. And it doesn't want to be that way, but it will be. So your body, your mind are like like a spoiled child. Okay? It needs a good parent. And the good parent is the soul that sits quietly and allows the influence of the presence in the present to gently influence and permeate your being okay? and and um, gentle you. Okay? That's what you need. And that's what your body needs. See? And your mind needs. So it's good. It's all good, as they say. Well, I think this video is long enough now. I want to keep it short. I guess for me this is short. My name is Roland.